Welcome to the ground instruction for exercise five from the flight training manual, which is all about attitudes and movements. This slideshow will walk you through some of the terminology we will be using during your flight training. We will review the three aircraft movements, pitch, roll, and yaw, and we will also talk about aircraft attitudes in relation to a specific aircraft attitude called the cruise attitude. But first, let's look at the way an aircraft moves in three-dimensional space. The first one we're going to talk about is pitch. Pitch is what you call movement about the airplane's lateral axis, and it's controlled by the elevator. So the lateral axis runs this way, and pitch is the movement about this axis. It is controlled by the elevator. So as the pilot moves the elevator with the yoke, to pitch up, pull towards you, and to pitch down, push it forward. Next is roll, and roll moves about the airplane's longitudinal axis. Now, if you're wondering why I'm telling you about the axis around which the movement is produced, it's because this is gonna show up on your private pilot exam, so it's easy if you just learn it now. So roll moves about the longitudinal axis and it's produced by the ailerons and the ailerons are controlled again by the yoke. The last one we're gonna talk about is yaw. So yaw is movement about the aircraft's vertical axis and it's controlled by the rudder using the rudder pedals. So again, here you have it, vertical axis and controlled by the rudder. Now that we know what an aircraft's movements are, let's talk about attitude. And before we get into it, let's first describe what we like to call the cruise attitude. So the cruise attitude is a visual reference point by which all other attitudes are described. It's basically when the aircraft is flying along and it's in a position where if you were to draw an invisible line across where an imaginary or actual, if you have it, horizon meets the sky. Looking ahead, you'll notice that you can see a small amount of land below the horizon and a large amount of sky. And if you look from side to side, you'll notice that the wings are also level with that horizon. So now that we know what cruise is, when we talk about a nose up or nose down attitude, what we're really talking about is an attitude in reference to that cruise attitude that we just described. So if I say nose down, you know that I mean nose down relative to that cruise attitude. And if I say nose up, you know that I mean nose up relative to that cruise attitude. Visually, you'll soon be able to tell if you're a nose up or a nose down attitude. If you are in a nose up attitude, you're gonna see a lot less ground and a lot more sky. Contrarily, if you're in a nose down attitude relative to cruise, you're gonna see a lot more ground and a lot less sky. You're also gonna notice something else. Without a change in power, if you go into a nose up attitude from cruise, you're gonna see an increase in altitude and your airspeed is gonna to start to decrease as well. And if you're in a nose down attitude, position relative to cruise, your airspeed is going to increase and your altitude is going to start to decrease. Okay, let's talk about roll. So roll is the movement about the aircraft's longitudinal axis and bank is describing that roll relative to the cruise attitude. Okay, so if I'm in cruise and I roll to the left, then I'll probably be in a left bank. And if I'm in cruise and I roll to the right, then I'm in a right bank. So bank describes the attitude that the roll is producing. Visually, you'll soon be able to tell if you're in a left or right bank as well. If you see too much sky below one wing and too much ground under the other, and the horizon in front of you, or the imaginary horizon, if you don't have a real one, or if it's distorted by geographical features like mountains, if that horizon is not uniform across your windscreen, if it's tilted to either side, then you're in a bank. So the flight controls that we're going to be looking at are the yoke and the rudder pedals. So there's the yoke and the rudder pedals and the control surfaces that they control. So it's important to note that yaw is controlled by the rudder and should not really be produced by the rudder. In normal cases, you don't really want to intentionally yaw the aircraft, and you'll go over this with your instructor in your first lesson. But really, what you're doing is you're controlling the yaw as opposed to producing it intentionally. 
Okay, let's wrap this up by talking about some safety considerations for your first flight. So when you get your private pilot license, you're gonna be getting a visual or a VFR license, which basically means among other things to see and avoid. There are other aircraft out there and it's our job to see them and avoid them. You'll hear other aircraft being referred to as traffic. Aircraft can be small and fast, so it's good practice to learn how to spot them early. Short, even, and focused eye movements or scanning can help you spot these little guys and helps to keep them and you safe. Another important safety measure that we're gonna use during your flight training is to define who has control of the aircraft at any specific point in time. So if I'm gonna take control of the aircraft, I will say, I have control. And then you take your hands and feet off the control and you respond with, you have control, meaning that you've given me full control of the aircraft and you're not gonna to try to fly it anymore. Also, if I wanna give you control of the aircraft, let you fly it around a little bit, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you have control. That way you know that you're flying the aircraft. So you're gonna put your hands and feet on the control, get ready to fly, and you're gonna to respond to me with, I have control, meaning that you've understood what I've done. Great, so now we've covered the uh, three movements that you're gonna see in your first flight, so pitch, roll, and yaw, and then we've described a series of attitudes that you're gonna find yourself in as a pilot. The important thing to do is to get an airplane and start to understand what all of these attitudes and uh, control inputs and the movements that they produce actually mean, what they look like and what they feel like, and that's gonna start the foundation for your training. If you have any questions about any of this, make sure that you bring them and ask them before the lesson starts. Otherwise, just come with your mind open, get ready to learn, and have a lot of fun.